I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about calculus and polar coordinates. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about section 10.3 calculus and polar coordinates and I'd like to start with problem number 21 that asks us to make a sketch of the region inside the curve r equals square root of cosine of theta and then find the area of the region. All right, so we're gonna start out by just drawing this curve and uh, there are a couple different ways of drawing a polar curve, uh, but I'm going to keep this fairly uh, simple. I'm not gonna make a T-chart and that's one way that we could go about it is just plug in some thetas, plug in some R's uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to say, well, if the square root were not there, I'd have r equals cosine of theta. And r equals cosine of theta, we know, is just a circle of diameter 1 sitting out here on the x-axis. So let's say that this is 1. Uh, then it would just be a circle of diameter 1 sitting here. What happens when I take the square root? Well, what it does is it actually, since all the values of r are between 0 and 1, the square root is going to make them all slightly bigger. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that circle and make it a little more, I guess you could say it's almost like puffy or something, uh, a little bit more oblong. Uh, than it normally would be for a circle. So it's just going to kind of expand that circle out just a little bit. Uh, it's still not going to ever be a radius longer than one, but it kind of just puffs it up a little bit inside of one. Okay, so we get a feel for what this thing looks like. Uh, so the region inside, uh, we're looking at just what is inside this kind of oblong shape, and we want to find the area of that region. Okay, so if I want to find the area, uh, then I'm going to integrate from some angle theta to another angle theta. And right here what I can see right off the bat is that this thing kind of ranges, well, here's zero, and here's pi over two, down here is negative pi over 2. So this kind of ranges from negative pi over 2. Thetas go from negative pi over 2 until they get to pi over 2. All right, that would trace out the entire shape. But I also know that notice that this is symmetric. And so I could just look at, well, what's the top half, the area of the top half, and then double that. Any time that I can get zero involved as one of my limits of integration, I kind of want to take advantage of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is two times the integral from zero to pi over two. And then what goes inside? Well, when I'm integrating area in polar, I don't just throw the function in there and I'm done. I have to remember what I put inside is one half of r squared. Now, in this case, r is the square root of cosine of theta. So what I want to put inside my integral is I want one half of r, which is the square root of cosine of theta, square root cosine theta, quantity squared d theta. All right, so this integral will give me the area inside of this polar curve. Now, I see I have a two, I see I have a one half, so that two and that two on the bottom will cancel, and I'll get that my area is equal to the integral from zero to pi over two of the square root of cosine squared. Uh, so that would just be cosine theta d theta. So let's take an antiderivative. The antiderivative of cosine of theta is sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. 
Now let's plug in the pi over two and the zero. Uh, so I get sine of pi over two minus the sine of zero. Sine of pi over two is one, sine of zero is zero, so we get one minus zero, which is one. So the amount of area inside this kind of oblong shape right here is exactly one unit.